Welcome back to the CS Podcast. I am your host, Chris Shanafel, and I am now joined by former NFL tight end, Ben Patrick. Thanks for joining the show, Ben. How's it going, man? It's going, it's going very well, man. I appreciate you having me on today. Hey, it's my pleasure. And uh, so first things first, we're going to talk a little bit about your football career. And later on, we'll uh, talk about a few things going around uh, the NFL. And uh, Ben, it was in the seventh round of the 2007 NFL draft when you were taken by the Arizona Cardinals. My first question for you is, uh, can you just tell us more about your draft day and what it was like to hear your name get called up to the podium or see, or just see your name go across the TV screen? Uh, it, was, it was a very stressful day, number one. Um, obviously, you have these different projections, you know, throughout the line or what agents are telling you. And um, for, for me, I was projected as a, as a higher draft choice. So in that time passed, you kind of really, you know, didn't know what was going to happen. And um, I did finally, you know, get the call from, from the Arizona Cardinals. It was a, a team that I hadn't even really met with. It was, it was surprising. It was shocking. I mean, it was, there was relief. I mean, you can't really describe what was going on and uh, having all my family and, and some of my close friends around. I mean, it's uh, definitely something I'll remember forever. So you say you were surprised that you were picked by the Cardinals. Was there a team maybe, uh, you know, leading up to the draft, scouts and whatnot, that really caught your eye and you thought, you know, there's a chance I might be playing for this team? Well, there's a, there's a good chance that I had a chance to, to play in Atlanta. Um, you know, being at Delaware, Philly was, was somebody who I talked to and even had a, a meet and greet with. Carolina was, was also discussed and uh, just based off of where people were falling in the draft, that's how they were kind of projecting it. So I was, I was you know, anticipating being in the Northeast or even uh, somewhere down south, but I hadn't talked to any, you know, out west teams at all, you know, in Texas, anybody in California. So it was really a, a surprise. Uh, and they were the one that actually, you know, contacted me. Well, Ben, it was in your rookie season with the Arizona Cardinals. You were cut, re-signed to the practice squad, and made your way up to the active roster to finish the season, playing eight games, starting three of them, and recording seven receptions and two touchdowns. How would you describe your first year in the NFL? Yeah, it was kind of, it was kind of funny. It's like the, the song goes, you know, I kind of started from the, from the bottom <laughs> of the barrel, really. And um, it was tough, you know, I came in and... Uh, had an injury that kind of set me back in the springtime and you know, battled my way through camp, but I still couldn't you know, show my true talent you know, that I displayed at Delaware, which was the frustrating thing is, is you know, wanting to prove yourself to your, to your teammates and your coaches. And I um, didn't get a chance to do that, and I just kind of had to keep chipping away at it. And finally got an opportunity to play the game and uh, you know, play San Francisco at home, which is one of my rivals, and you know, a fourth down call with about a minute left in the game. I scored a touchdown on it, and it kind of, uh, I wouldn't say catapulted me, but it kind of you know, gave me the confidence to, to know that I belong, you know, belong in the NFL, and um, kind of, kind of set me on the path that you know kept me as a starter from there on. And uh, yeah, so so the next season in 2008, you were the number one tight end in Arizona, correct? Oh, the, the starting H back. The way our, our offense worked, we had a true tight end and an H back, so I kind of played a, a, a dual role. But I was I was a move tight end, if you want to call it that. All right, and Ben, can you just talk about the journey yourself and the Arizona Cardinals went on this uh, 2008 season? As you guys, as you guys finished the season nine and seven, you guys got hot at the right time and uh, was able to go head to head with the Pittsburgh Steelers in Super Bowl 43. Can you tell us more about that journey? Um, sure. The, the season was you know <clears throat> some ups and downs, but I think the turning point was actually when we went up to uh, New England, played in a basketball storm, and we actually got blown out that game, and um, when we got back from that trip, I don't know what it, you know, what it was, I don't know if it was the investment, the blowout or what, but we kind of uh, kind of refocused and <clears throat> kind of got on the little roll, and uh, as we got close towards the end of the season, we were just playing some really good football, I think we won our last four out of five games, and uh, we just were really hitting on all cylinders, and uh, I think after, you know, that first game against Atlanta, uh, just you can, you can kind of feel the magic. Everybody talks about it's a magical season or, or whatnot, but you can just kind of feel something different in the team compared to the uh, regular season. And uh, you know, once we went to Carolina and, and blew those guys out, it was just it was one of those things where you just kind of knew. <laughs> destined. I'm sorry. It was almost destined. Ben, let me tell you something. I, I kid you not. I made a ten dollar bet on that game that the Cardinals would defeat the Steelers twenty three to twenty in, in Super Bowl forty three. Any chance you could? Uh, any chance you remember the score to the game before Santonio Holmes made that game winning touchdown reception? Before, before he made that, yes, sir. Uh, 
yeah, we would have been about 21, I guess we would have been 21 to uh, 17, maybe? Hey, it was 23 to 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> man, you guys let me down on that bet, man. You guys let me down on that bet. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just kidding, man. But, uh, you know, it really was just a great game. It was uh, it was very unfortunate that you guys came up just short. 27-23 to 23 was the final score the Steelers won that Super Bowl. Uh, now, there's a picture of you standing while uh, the confetti is falling down after that game, and it looks like you're just in disbelief. Uh, what was going through your mind at that moment? Um, from thinking about the same picture, I just was, uh, I was walking off the field. I, you know, didn't want to be a part of celebration. Obviously, didn't want to stay and look. But you know, as I got towards the locker room, I was just looking up at the scoreboard one more time. It was kind of that realization that we were, you know, that close to uh, cementing a permanent legacy in, in NFL history. And it was, you know, it was, it was tough one to swallow. Considering the jury we had come on, and you know, a lot of people had counted us out and said that we didn't even belong in the playoffs. And it was that was just we're two minutes and fifteen seconds away from. You know, essentially shutting everybody up. So it was it was a tough one to swallow, but at the same time, you know, there were thirty other teams, you know, that we had uh, surpassed. So it was still a you know, it was still still a good journey. You were able to catch a touchdown pass from Kurt Warner in that Super Bowl game. Uh, would you say that that is the most memorable play of your NFL career? You know, surprisingly, I don't think it. I don't think it is. I mean, obviously, the, the magnitude of the game, um, being a part of history for, for catching our first touchdown was. I'm pretty special, but I'd, I'd venture to say that the, the Philly game might have been even uh, even more even more uh, surprising for me. You know, that was a game leading up to the Super Bowl, mm -hmm. and the way if you remember the way that game ended, we had to end that game on a, you know, two or three drives where we went 12 plays, 14 plays, 15 plays, and it was kind of one of those grinded out type games. And that actually caught the two point conversion to give us. Uh, you know, full touchdowns at the time. You know, when I caught it, you know, I figured I'd at least give uh, my team a, a chance that in case that Philly did score, they weren't going to beat us on a touchdown. You know, they'd actually tie the game and we'd have to go to overtime. So, um, just uh, the journey I had been on for the three or four years and they come up with a play that big and uh, I had a couple of big blocks in that game that gave Kurt some time to throw uh, 15 touchdowns. So, I just think that the overall performance of that game was kind of the high point of my career for me. Um, just you know, that have been through so many things that a lot of people, you know, fans and other people will never know that athletes go through or players go through. Um, you know, the misconception is that they see Sundays and they, they forget about what goes on, you know, Monday to Saturday, what goes on on the field, off the field, uh, in the building. Um, anytime you deal in, in corporate business or, or big money business, there's a lot of things that happen, you know, cutthroat wise that are that aren't documented that people don't know about. So I think we put all those things into perspective from my point of view. I think that was that, that Philly game was the high point. After a couple more seasons in Arizona, Ben, you signed a contract uh, with the New York Giants. And about five days after you signed that contract, you announced your retirement. Uh, why, why did you make this decision, and how did you know you were ready to walk away from football? It's almost the situation that occurred in life all the time. Um, I had some, some issues I wanted to deal with back home uh, Dealing with my family, or maybe my mother, um, to, to take care of her. Um, you know, being in a new setting, starting all over, those things kind of play in, in, you know, play a role in it. But uh, making sure that my family was okay was was the main thing. And uh, obviously, not being a superstar in the league, you you wrestle with the fact that you might not get another opportunity to to shoot up again. But um, you know, I don't think I would have done it any differently, even looking back at it now. I don't think I would have done anything differently. Well, th there's no doubt family comes first. And, uh, you know, do, do you ever think that, you know, you, you would be a Super Bowl champion if you just played that one last season? Well, of course. You know, any, any athlete, any, anybody human would, would look at it and uh, see that same year that they had that type of success. Um, but, you know, unfortunately in life, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Sometimes you can always second guess, and, and hindsight's always twenty twenty. but... You know, that's just the way that life goes. You know, it could have very well been that New York ended up going, you know, 2-14 and, and had a rebuilding year. And, you know, who's to say that I even, you know, made that team? You know, because it wasn't guaranteed. It wasn't a guaranteed contract. There was no uh, bonus involved. Um, so, you know, those little things play a, you know, play a factor when you, when you make decisions like that. 
uh, especially living in a place like uh, New York when you're moving cross country in 24 hours. There's a lot of different things that you know come to mind. It's uh, it's very very difficult. Oh, I bet. Chris Shanfell talking with former NFL tight end Ben Patrick. And Ben, let's let's talk a little bit about uh, the NFL today. And earlier this week, your former head coach in Arizona, Ken Wisenhunt, uh, was named the head coach in Tennessee. What are your thoughts on that? Right, it's, it's a tremendous form. I'm glad he got another opportunity to, to, to be at the helm, which I think he uh, you know, rightly deserves. Uh, having, having played in the NFL, he's definitely got a different perspective. Uh, as far as being a, a player and now a coach. So I think that he'll do good things with that uh, organization. Obviously, uh, San Diego had some success, and uh, Philip Rivers had some, some success that he hasn't had in a couple of years, and I think that's directly attributed to uh, Coach Wizenhunt. So I, I look for big things in Tennessee in, in the next year or two. How is your uh, relationship with Coach Wizenhunt? It seems like you're very high on him. I want you know, he played the position, he played tight end. Um, so his expectations for the tight end position on our team were very high. Uh, I had conversations with him. Uh, fun guy, uh, pretty you know, open door policy when I when I dealt with him. And uh, he's uh, again being a player and now a coach, you can kind of understand some of the things that players are, are going through uh, on and off the field. So he has a little bit of a different perspective. Um, but you know, I don't have anything any negative things to say about him. I think he's a good man, a good family man as well. So um, I, I wish him the best of luck in Tennessee. And Ben, speaking of the tight end position as a whole, I have to ask you this: What are your thoughts on the tight end position today? Now, I know I know it hasn't been uh, that long since you've retired, but you know the tight end position is more of a receiver nowadays than your playing day. Would you agree? Um, in some ways I would, in some ways I wouldn't. I think it kind of depends on the um, identity of your team. Uh, when you when you look at a team like a New Orleans, um, they're not really going to ground and pound you, and they're they're Tight end is primarily a receiver when you look at the, the Jimmy Grahams or the, uh, the San Diego's and Antonio Gates guys like that. They're primarily primarily passing, uh, receiving tight ends. Not to say that they can't block, but I think it depends on the, the dynamic of your team, really. When you look at a, you know, per se, a Zach Miller in Seattle who's still a very good tight end who can catch the ball very well, but that, you know, that team's going to run the ball a little bit more. And um, he makes it, you know, he makes his money off of play action and some of the vertical game. But um, I think it just really depends on the identity of the of the team, so to speak. And Ben, growing up, who who was a NFL player that you looked up to? Was it a quarterback, a running back, a receiver, or, or was it a tight end? Surprisingly, it was there's not none of the above. Huh. Uh, I didn't get into football until. 11th and 12th grade year. Uh, my brother played college football. I, you know, I looked up to him. Um, but I was a basketball player and a baseball player growing up, and uh, football somewhat happened. Just kind of happened my 11th and 12th grade year. But I didn't really grow up watching too much football. It was uh, it was a learning process, man. It took me about four or five years to really kind of learn the game. And uh, obviously, coming to Arizona, it was a totally different role than what I played in Delaware. It was more of a slot receiver and a you know, move tight end. So. Um, wouldn't say that I grew up idolizing anybody on the football field, but I, you know, I, I, I ended up liking it. That, that's interesting. We hear a lot about Antonio Gates and Jimmy Graham, how they're, you know, basketball players. They're basketball players that, that just, you know, suit up in a football uniform. Is that what Ben Patrick was? You know, it's hard to say. I mean, I, you know, I can't, I can't necessarily be mentioned in the same breath as, as those guys and what they've, uh, what they've accomplished. But, um, you know, in Delaware being a, a you know, uh, receiving type tight end, you know, those type of guys, especially at Gates, you know, the bosses and guys like that, um, obviously had an influence on the position. And uh, when I was able to put up the Delaware, that was kind of how I had hoped to, to see myself evolve into, you know, similar guys like a, like a Gates or a Gonzalez or, you know, there's the Shannon Sharps or there's a ton of tight ends that are, that are great in the receiving game. So that was kind of what I was hoping to emulate my game after, but... You know, unfortunately, things just don't work out the way you want them to sometimes. Final question on the tight end position for you, Ben, and that is, uh, you know, this is this was Tony Gonzalez's final year of uh, playing football, at, at least it seems like it right now. Uh, how much has Tony Gonzalez meant to the tight end position? Well, if you look at it, you know, the position itself, uh, it's up to his standards. You know, every tight end is measured off of, of, of him, so um, I think when you look at other athletes like the, the Michael Jordans and, you know, the Derek Jeters, you know, usually a baseball player when 
their greatness is, is often compared to those guys or up to their standards. So anytime you can put your, your type of stamp of legacy on a sport in a position, um, you know, that's, that's pretty big time. I mean, his numbers are good enough to be receivers' numbers, which kind of speaks volumes to what type of athlete he was. You're absolutely right about that. And Ben, this weekend we have the AFC and NFC Championship games. The New England Patriots are going to Mile High City to take on the Denver Broncos. And the San Francisco 49ers are headed to Seattle to take on the Seahawks and that 12th man. Uh, who do you have winning this weekend? You know, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think I could even <laughs> shoot up here. It sounds cliche. You know, it's it's like a coin toss. by far the loudest place. It is as advertised. People don't even understand how loud that place is. Um, if there's a team that can beat them there, though, I do believe San Francisco has the nucleus to do it. The question is, you know, which team is going to show up? So, you know, playing in the NFC West, that's, that's a tough call. Uh, my man Bolton's over in San Francisco, so I, I want to see him do well. I really do, but uh, it's hard to pick against Seattle at, in Seattle. Hey, hey, man, it's all right if you go with Seattle, man. Bolden won his Super Bowl ring last year, you remember? <laughs> yeah, he did, but the way that uh, things transpired with him in Arizona, I'd love to see him get two. Absolutely. I'd love to see him get two with two different teams, especially in the NFC West. Uh, it's the team that you know, Arizona played. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, ben, I, I can't tell you how much of a pleasure it was speaking with you, man. Uh, you know, I, I really do appreciate it. Uh, before I let you go, is there anything you'd like to plug on the air for myself and our listeners? Well, I just appreciate the opportunity to come on. Um, obviously, I hope people uh, enjoy the, the show this weekend because you can't ask for four better teams uh, leading up to the Super Bowl. Um, so I just appreciate the opportunity to be on, man, and I look forward to the, to the next time. Oh, sounds good, man. Take care, all right? All right, thanks a lot, buddy.